Welcome to Make Workshop, where we check out tools, toys, and tech built for makers. Today, we're going to play with a 3D scanner. This is the RevelPoint POP2 3D scanner. Uh, before I get any further into this, um, I just want to point out that this is a Kickstarter. I believe it's already live. You'll find a link to it down below. But, you know, with Kickstarters, you need to be careful, do your own research and realize that there are no guarantees on Kickstarter. It's not a store. There's a chance that the Kickstarter uh, may not deliver. There's always a chance. Now, that being said, RevelPoint, they already manufactured it. Uh, they've already done a successful Kickstarter with the first version. So, um, you know, they're, they're probably gonna deliver just fine. Uh, but let's actually look at the product. So this is the RevelPoint POP2 3D scanner. It's a structured light 3D scanner, much like you might remember the old uh, Kinect uh, being, but much higher resolution. This scanner can get down to 0.1 millimeters, I believe they said, uh, which I'll show some examples in a little bit is pretty detailed. I was very eager to check this out because 3D scanning is an area that I see a lot of room for improvement in. I've used a, a Kinect version one for many years and it leaves a lot to be desired as far as resolution goes. And so when I saw something like this that offers a much higher resolution, I was eager to give it a try. Like I said earlier, this is version two of their 3D scanner. So they have improved on the previous one. You can find a whole bunch of video reviews of the previous one all over YouTube, look for the RevelPoint Pop 1 3D scanner or something like that. Um, and this one, it, like I said, improves on that. So what did they improve? What can it do? What are the capabilities? 3D scanning is tough because it's, uh, you know, not as magical as people might assume or hope it is if they've never used a 3D scanner. However, that being said, this is a huge improvement over what there was before. Here's how it works. You hook it up to your computer or possibly your cell phone. We'll get back to that bit in a bit. You hook it up to a machine. You put an item out here in front of it and you can scan it by moving the scanner or turning on a turntable here uh, to move your item around. It shoots beams of infrared light and does all kinds of magic to scan your object. Then you end up with a point cloud, which is all the different points that it has estimated, and you convert that into a mesh, which can then be used you know, in game engines or in 3D printing. Some cool things about this scanner. They, uh, of course, the, the package is really well done. Like I said, it seems like they're actually, they're a company that's already manufactured all this. They seem to be doing a good job with their manufacturing. It came with all the cables I needed, no matter what computer or phone I was gonna use it with. It came with a, uh, a second um, tripod that included a battery in it for whenever I was m using this mobile. It came with this tripod, this turntable, and this plate. I'm not sure how many of those are add-ons. So uh, you might wanna check their site before you assume that it's gonna come with all those things for you. Uh, some of these could be add-ons that they just sent me, you know, in hopes that I would uh, share it on the video. Uh, some of the cool features, the software has a bunch of different settings, so you can kind of determine different optimal settings for things, like it has a setting for full body scan, uh, lower resolution quick scan, super high resolution scan, um, and one that actually, if you watch the videos of the, the other previews, it, it has difficulty with hair and uh, dark things. And so there's a hair and dark things setting. It's still not perfect. It's far from perfect. But like I said, all 3D scanners are far from perfect right now. One cool thing that this scanner does is it uses logic to determine the, the item, even if you move the item. Like, let's say, for example, we wanted to scan this statue and then we also wanted to get the bottom you would scan it like this turn it over and it would automatically realize you've turned the item over and continue adding to the scan that's finicky it doesn't always work perfectly but when it does work it's really really cool uh, because it allows you to of course get a full 3d scan of the entire object i personally use this connected to a computer the whole time it does have the capability of connecting by wi-fi to your phone but 
It's kind of complicated. You have to like change the name of your phone itself and open up a hotspot and connect to that. Personally, I didn't want to mess with it. Uh, I may mess with it more after this, but already that's kind of a pain beyond like what a normal Bluetooth connection would be or normal Wi-Fi connection would be. Um, and then there is a cable to connect by USB-C, but that's currently not available for things like the iPad. Uh, so I'm eager actually for them to get that connected because that would be optimal. Um, you know, using it on the iPad with the USB-C, that would be great. Let's look at some of these scan results. Here's one of the first things I tried scanning and I chose this uh, for good reason. First off, look at this. It's a really creepy sculpture my son did when he was younger. Those are real teeth, real fingernails. He was a creepy kid. Might still be a little creepy. But I chose this specifically because it has a few things that will really trip up a 3D scanner. Those fingernails on the top are usually too fine and you'll see that this scanner did have some issues with those. I could have maybe um, scanned it better and in higher resolution. And these teeth are shiny. Shiny objects typically throw scanners for a loop. They have a hard time with shiny objects. As you can see, the scan turned out pretty well. As we suspected, those fingernails on top didn't come out quite right, but it did it surprisingly well on the teeth. It actually had a harder time getting the, the uh, cavity behind the teeth. No pun intended. So that was pretty impressive. Uh, check out some other scans I've done here. I scanned my son's face in both high resolution and lower resolution. Let's look at those a little bit. Now I'm, I'm turning off the shading here so that you can see the details of these scans. And as you can see, it really struggled with reflective things like his eyes. Now, in their Kickstarter video, they scan someone's face and it comes out perfect. Every face I scanned, the eyes, the pupil of the eye, it just didn't come out. But I'm sure, you know, if I had, if I used it for more than a day or two before I made a video, I'm sure I could come up with the workarounds that are needed to get those perfect results. And I plan to keep playing with this. Let's look at another one here. This is a, a raccoon skull I found on my property and I used this one, I scanned it in different orientations to test out the different orientation test. And look at this side by side here. It's pretty impressive. Check out the electronics page in the Maker Shed and get your favorite maker a kit or two. We have Microbit, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, and all kinds of other cool kits, gadgets, and tools. There's something for all skill levels, and if you get over $75 and you're in the U.S., there's free shipping too. Check it out at Makershed.com. Oh, and be sure to subscribe to the newsletter and get weekly deals. One use case that I found interesting is I want to design a, uh, a set of accessories for accessibility, helping disabled gamers play video games, but I couldn't find a good model of an Xbox controller. So I scanned one. The scan wasn't perfect at all, but the dimensions and overall shape were right, so I can use that to model what I need to model. All in all, I would say that it's a really cool piece of tech. Um, just don't get your hopes up too high of having like a perfect scanning experience because nothing against RevoPoint, actually, I think they did a fantastic job. Just in general, 3D scanning is kind of a mess. It's kind of a pain because you're dealing with light and anytime you're dealing with light and trying to measure light, reflecting off of things, you end up with issues. You're gonna see problems in uh, photogrammetry, structured light, all these different kind of 3D scanning technologies. And you should experiment with all of them to see which one fits your needs the best. Like I said, this is a Kickstarter. Um, you'll find a link to the Kickstarter down below. It looks like they're charging between $400 and $600 for the unit. I'm guessing the more expensive one probably comes with, you know, the upgrades like the turntable and stuff like that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give us a thumbs up. It really helps us out a lot. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.